You know, a retro logo loses its effect when a Warner Media plug shows up at the bottom of the screen. You know what? I'm going to ignore this BS and throw you a bone for once. I'm proud of you for promptly getting to a movie the audience actually wants to see and doing it in January, the worst month for YouTubers. Please donate to my Patreon, guys. I'm fucking dying. Not that long to smell it, but I think to look at it, it's terrible. It's rare for a movie to include critical reviews about itself anywhere, much less at the very beginning. Insinuating that Joker is terrible. That's worth these many sins. <sighs> this is the whole movie right here. He tugs at himself enough, he can see himself as funny. The movie tugs at itself enough, vague setting, obvious references, it can see itself as unique. What the f*** does that mean, Kobe Bryant? You're welcome. When you're going out of business, why would you spend money on a sign clown? You are going out of business! Stop spending money! Minimum wage in 1981 was $3.35. I'm pretty sure even MC Hammer can afford that. Also, who goes running after a large group of thieves over a cardboard sign? Is he desperate? Maybe. Is he stupid? I guess so. Most folks would just go back to the boss and say they got robbed. The movie needs him to get his ass beat, and so he does. But I'm not convinced he had a good reason to run after them into an alley. We're talking about someone suffering from a mental illness, so much so, he imagines himself in blatantly fantastic situations. Thinking logically isn't exactly on the top of his agenda, I would think. So far, this is my life story. Only instead of a clown costume, I was in a Michael W. Smith t-shirt. Skip! Goddamn movie, your title is so big it makes me think you have a tiny penis. Joker. I said skip, dammit. <laughs> Nearly a minute of cry laughing. Arthur is suffering from the pseudo-bulbar effect, an actual disorder that affects real people. Not only are you being insensitive making light of this condition as if it were made up, you're missing the character building aspect of this scene. All throughout this movie, the clocks read 11-11. Is this movie a continuation of us? Does Arthur have a doppelganger? Is he the doppelganger? Anyway, reading some stuff on the internet says the number 11 can mean anxious, shy, stressed, conflicted, scattered, which seems to fit symbolically. Anyway, all the clocks being 11-11 is a f***ing sin. It isn't all the clocks, because later in the movie, you point out that there are clocks in the movie that aren't 11-11. Here is a clock that is not 11-11 right here on the Murray Franklin Show. What's really going to make your noodle is when I tell you that if you pay attention to analog clocks in advertisements, they almost always display 10 10. Go on, check. Arthur, you're on seven different medications. Surely they must be doing something. What, lady? Is that really how mental health medicine works? By sheer math? At least in the movie, yeah. Because the moment Arthur is off of them, the dude kinda snaps. Would you please stop bothering my kid? While everyone compares Joker to a bunch of Scorsese movies, the one it really takes after is I don't feel at home in this world anymore, in which every person Melanie Linsky runs into is an asshole, or dildos, or faces. Even if that were true, that movie is also pretty damn good. So Jeremy sends something he likes cliche. If I had to walk up this set of stairs every time I went home, I would literally die. No, you would literally extend your lifespan, because that's what exercising does. Also, yes, these stairs are real, and in New York City, and I'm adding 10 cents for all the asshats that have turned these stairs into a tourist destination so that regular pedestrians are inconvenienced. And I'm giving you a sin for being inconsistent, because I'm fairly certain you didn't give Rocky 10 cents for turning the steps in front of the Philadelphia Museum of Art into a tourist destination. Also, also, I wouldn't touch either of those handrails if you paid me $100. Oh my god, who the hell Cares. Why does this apartment complex have a cage around the mail? These mailboxes all have locks and keys. This appears to be the slums. Why the extra money spent on a mail prison cage that isn't even closed all the time? Because this is obviously to protect the mail person? And if you don't think that a mailman needs protection, you obviously don't know that it's a felony to steal mail. There's a reason that law is in place, is what I'm saying. It's Thomas Wayne, Mom. Please. I worked for that family for years. The least you could do is write back. Super not casual Batman references. Super not casual. Jeremy thinks simply talking about Thomas Wayne is a Batman reference and treats referencing Batman as a sin in a movie about the Joker. Kind of a nice touch they made Robert De Niro the Jerry Lewis character in this King of Comedy remake. Jeremy sins something he likes cliche. So everybody's heard about the super rats that are in Gotham now, right? Look, Robert De Niro is a legend, and we're lucky to have him, but he is super awkward at comedy. And I can't imagine someone like him or the character he's playing ever getting a late-night talk show. Robert De Niro is awkward at comedy? Apparently, Jeremy has never heard of Analyze This and Meet the Parents. Arthur Fleck dreams about being an audience member called down to the stage on his favorite talk show. Meanwhile, I dream about ninja cows trying to steal my kidneys. What? Bro, what are you talking about, man? Kenny's music. Uh, the guy said you disappeared. See, here's why Arthur should have called his boss to report his ass beating, so that he wouldn't be blamed for not promoting the company he was hired to promote. Instead, he told no one, and now he's gonna get reprimanded. 
Well, gee, Jeremy, thanks for telling us information that we, the audience, could also see. You know, because we're watching the movie, too, and gathered that information all on our own. Seriously, this is the staircase to hell. Instead of going down, you have to walk up to get to hell. As you stated earlier, this is a real staircase. So, please, explain how this is a sin of the film. Also, I take it you've never been to Universal Studios in Hollywood, because I can tell you, this ain't shit. Don't you have to be funny to be a comedian? Half the fan mail I get opens with this exact phrase. And yet, CinemaSins continues to not get the message. This is a great shot. This whole movie is full of great shots. Great acting, great set design. It's one of the most well-made movies I ever hated. Jeremy sends something he hates cliche. B wait. Look, I understand Arthur is going to misspell words, but why does he use half instead of have here and use the correct form of the word having twice? You can't half it both ways, movie. This is due to the words have and half being near homophones in spoken American English. The reason he properly uses the word having is because halving isn't homophonous. This is precisely why the less educated of us use should of when they meant should of. Homophones, it's what's for breakfast. Apparently the manager of the clown rental place thought Arthur was the best choice to entertain sick kids at a hospital. This is a guy who has apparently gotten numerous complaints about his performance in the past, so sure, he was probably the best option. He could have simply been the only clown available. Maybe the other clowns didn't want this gig. You don't have enough information to make the inferences you are. You really should have stuck to pointing out continuity errors, cousin, because film analysis is clearly not your bag. Wait, please. I love this job. So wait, did the hospital call security or something and kick Arthur out? Has he been wandering the streets until it got dark to call his boss from a payphone? Or did his boss call him and this is the usual payphone he reaches him at? Here's another piece of information that could have been used for the previous sin. Arthur clearly loves what he does. But no, you're stuck on him using a payphone. See what I mean? So, oh buddy, tell us what's so funny. Making a parallel to Bernard Goetz in this movie opens up a great discussion about Gotham's thirst for heroes in the throes of a growing sickness. But there was a racial element to the Goetz shootings, and it was debatable he could even claim self-defense. But this movie strips away a lot of that context and makes Arthur a straight-up victim. And his actions seem justified, even though he does track down one of these dudes and kill him in cold blood. That said, he's a sympathetic character because we see him suffer. It's almost like we're saying the villains in the world all have a good reason for being this way. And remember, this guy becomes the Joker. I don't even know what we're supposed to think about that. I'm not even sure where to start with this one, but the gist is that this movie is stating that villains are people too. I'm not sure if you're aware, but this is a fact. Sometimes there are societal reasons why madmen become mad, and others are due to people simply being crazy. All you have to do is watch the Aaron Hernandez documentary on Netflix to see that. Anyway, bad things do happen to people that cause them to snap. It's not an excuse, but it does happen. Simply presenting this is not excusing it. Joker definitely fires one shot into the first guy, two into the second, and one into the leg of the third. That's four. Then when he catches him, he shoots a fifth time, then walks up to the guy and shoots three more times. That's eight bullets. I just don't feel like that gun holds eight bullets. What you're failing to realize is that this is a very subtle nod at Arthur being an unreliable narrator. The end of the film reveals that the entire movie is him retelling these events to a psychiatrist, which means these elements are either him misremembering those events or embellishing them. Man, killing gives you a lot of energy! It's called adrenaline, son. This is why people tend to vomit after they kill someone. Don't... don't ask me how I know. How do you make your not really a comic book movie stand out like it's high art? And not some lowly movie we can't call cinema like Avengers Endgame? And I'm gonna stop you right there. Subscribing to the stupid ideology that a comic book movie isn't art or cinema just because Martin Scorsese said so. You know, the guy that made essentially the same exact movie for 50 years? It's almost as if our less fortunate residents are taking the side of the killer. How do people know enough about this story to have an opinion that the poor person was shooting at the rich people for a reason that would rally them behind the killer? The only thing people watching the news know is that three guys got shot in the subway by a guy in clown makeup. Even if they heard the other parts of the story, how would this get framed as rich versus poor? First of all, the presenters on TV said almost. They didn't say definitively that it was rich versus poor, but this interview became a self-fulfilling prophecy due to broadcasting this sentiment. Second, all three people that were killed were a part of Wayne Enterprises, the company that belongs to the very wealthy father of Batman man who happens to be running for mayor. If you couldn't put those dots together, well, I'd ask, should we really trust your ability to criticize this film? <laughs> 
How long would they let him do this before pulling him off stage? Considering this is a comedian, they probably might have thought this was a bit. Why would this woman yammer on and on, year after year, about Thomas Wayne to her son, but never tell him that he was Thomas Wayne's son? She's like an endless fountain of Wayne information, except one part that I can't think of a good reason for her to hide from Arthur. It shouldn't be information a man in his 40s is finding out only because he read a letter not intended for him. Jeremy thinks women always tell their children who their actual father is. As Kanye West put it, 18 years, 18 years, she got one of your kids, got you for 18 years. On her 18th birthday, he found out it wasn't his. He killed that bitch. They gave him 25 years. 25 years. Now, I ain't saying she a gold digger, but she ain't messing with no broke nigga. I'm Bruce. Bruce what? Banner? Almighty? Willis? Valanche? The sin right before this, Jeremy literally says Bruce Wayne. Ux to Bruce Wayne through an iron gate. Ux to Bruce Wayne. Ux to Bruce Wayne. To Bruce Wayne. This is my point when I say Jeremy feigns ignorance cliche. He sometimes pretends to be dumb in order to pad the sin count. Not only that, but this shit isn't even funny. Like, what was this? That was a big nothing and a big waste of our time. We got this videotape from Pogo's Comedy Club right here in Gotham. Here's a guy who thinks if you just keep laughing, it'll somehow make you funny. I don't know if this is in Arthur's head or what, but I have a couple questions about this scene. First off, did someone in the audience videotape this performance? Or was it Pogo's Comedy Club? Remember, Pogo's had closed circuit televisions for the comedians, but this shot is completely different than the one that shows up on Murray's show. And this is the early 80s, so it would be hard to believe that they set up multiple cameras in this place. Jeremy thinks it's hard to believe that there could possibly be more than one camera in use because it's the 80s. I can't even muster up the strength to explain why that's silly. Arthur copies CinemaSins Chris and tries to pose as an usher to get inside an auditorium. Let Chris tell you from experience. The people in charge of all the ushers at a place like this will notice you walking into an auditorium and they will come and ask you what the f*** you are doing and they will kick you out if you tell them a bull story. Oh, hello, Chris. Thanks for joining Jeremy in this video with your horrible sounding microphone so I can tell both of you that this movie is all in Arthur's head. He is 100% blocking someone's view here. I'm 99% sure that theaters do not build staircases so that if someone is standing on them, it blocks the screen for someone sitting. That extra 1% is because I'm a scientist and we don't do 100%. Scientist? What kind of scientist are you? A booty scientist. Bruh. Why would a benefit for a mayoral candidate show old Charlie Chaplin films? How does this in any way connect to your campaign for mayor? And if you tell me this is just a theater in the same building as the benefit, then I tell you that no theater randomly showing Charlie Chaplin films would sell out to predominantly old white men in tuxedos. The movie the audience is watching is called Modern Times, a movie Todd Phillips drew inspiration from for this film. Both these films share a lot of thematic elements, and that's why it was included. The film in this film, that's mostly in Arthur's head, is foreshadowing the events in this film. Film, film, film. Film, 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 film. We stopped by your apartment today, but you weren't home. The movie is pretty mostly set in 1981, but Wikipedia tells me answering machines weren't widespread until about 1984, which means Arthur is not only an early adopter, but spent a fortune on this device, a fortune he and his mother do not have. Why not just have a detective leave a note on the door with his business card when he stops by earlier? Why do you have to anachrontagonize me? I see that you're still a white belt in Wikipedia, because while I see that you found this particular passage, you seem to have missed the one right above it, suggesting that the answering machine had been commercially viable since 1949. Which means Arthur and his mother got one 32 years later. That's not called early adoption. Yeah, I hear you, brother. Cringiest line a white guy said to a black guy since if it were legal, I'd have voted for Obama for a third term from Get Out. Jeremy thinks white people don't say the word brother. We've been hanging and banging, brother, 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 brothers, brother. 20,000 leagues under the sea is a nice place to deposit somebody, brother, 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 brother. Interestingly, he also says Nick. What are you doing in here? You probably guessed that Arthur's relationship with Sophie wasn't real the moment the movie tried to tell you that it was. But now that it's admitted lying to you, what do we do with this? Now everything we've seen Arthur experience is called into question because of this Tyler Durden moment. Are there people inspired by his subway murders? Did the murders even happen? Did Murray really put his stand-up act on the air? And did he really invite him to be on the show? I guess we're supposed to think just this is a lie. In all their infinite wisdom, the five writers at CinemaSins have never heard of the unreliable narrator. Do you guys understand the gravity of what I'm saying to you? The channel that points out tropes for a living has never heard of that particular trope. Kind of makes one think that they half-assed their job.
Do heart monitors usually just stop making noise when someone dies? Like, is it the monitor's job just to beep when someone's heart is beating? But when it's over, it's like, all right, I did my job. Here's where you should have removed a sin. EKG machines usually do not make that flat line beep noise when someone dies in real life. In fact, that beep is usually made when the machine is unplugged or one of the leads falls off. Yet another film trope that you missed. A VCR? This household spent tons on being early tech adopters. Jesus. VCRs debuted in 1976 in Japan, and this movie is set in 1981. I don't think someone having a device five years after it comes out can be called an early adopter. Because that's not what the word early means. Guys, this is the weirdest Purge movie I've ever seen. Jeremy makes a pop culture rep. As Joker dances down the stairs, a famous song by the infamous Gary Glitter plays. And I have concerns. Gary Glitter is a convicted pedophile. Everyone should stop using his music. In fact, most sports arenas and venues already did. This is the problem with you people. This is a movie about a villain. It's not supposed to show Arthur in a positive light. He's not supposed to be heroic. Using an actual villain's music is supposed to hammer that point home. For all the moral posturing you people like to do, you sure as hell fail to recognize nuance and completely miss what artists, comedians, and filmmakers are attempting to say. Wow, he got to the train just as the doors were closing? Maybe this is a comic book movie. Everything that happens is so goddamn convenient. I wonder what would happen if someone took a census of the word convenient in CinemaSense's videos. My bet is that it appears in 99% of all their videos. That would tell normal people that all movies contain convenient elements, but no, CinemaSense thinks they've stumbled upon El Dorado or some shit, and we're sadly looking at them like the broken record they are. It's got a book. A book of jokes. Every writer or comedian I've ever known has a book of ideas they carry with them. This is not a reason to mock, but rather a tool of the trade. But how many of those comedians actually bring that book out on stage with them that's not a part of a gag? Comedy is subjective, Murray. Isn't that what they say? I have a bad feeling he's talking about cinema sense. No, he's not. Because your comedy is objectively bad. Everybody just yells and screams at each other. Nobody's civil anymore! Facebook. See what I mean? This joke would have been objectively better if he said Twitter. You sound like you're making excuses for killing those young men. Geez, does Murray truly believe Arthur killed those guys? Or is this all about the show must go on? I feel like on a live show this would have cut to commercial long ago and Arthur escorted out by security and detained until the cops came for questioning. Unfortunately for you and your feelings, this kind of situation has actually happened before and the killer was actually given time to explain himself. I'm going to turn myself in next door at the sheriff's department for a uh, crime I was involved in years ago and somebody lost their life. It was murder. These things that have happened throughout my whole life since then, for over 25 years, have pushed me and pushed me to do the right thing. Look at this guy, all not being detained and stuff. What do you get? I don't think so. When you cross I think a mentally ill loner with a society it. that abandons him and treats him like trash! He becomes president? See, this is what I'm talking about. A Trump joke is basically an ollie oop at this point, and you still can't dunk it, Jeremy. Regardless of what people think today, Trump has never been a loner nor abandoned by society and treated like trash. The dude had a very successful TV show, has made numerous film cameos, and was referenced in movies all the time. All calls will be coming through this switchboard. And I'm gonna marry Donald Trump. I'd venture to say that before Obama became president, Donald was actually very well liked in mainstream media. Mr. and Mrs. Donald Trump. <laughs> it's the Donald! Oh my God! <laughs> Isn't it beautiful? This ambulance is being driven by one of the insane clown posse, and it's going to be the ex machina Joker needs to get out of this. You want to know how I got these scars? <laughs> well, Jeremy kept misusing the term Deus Ex Machina, <laughs> and I just, I just went crazy. <laughs> so here's the end of this movie. It's pretty good, I guess. Would any of you have watched this movie if it wasn't called Joker? My guess is that you wouldn't. So I guess the next thing that an independent production that has no chance in hell of getting an audience needs to do is somehow tie it into a Thanos origin story. Just a guy driving around LA traffic all day yelling, I wish only half these people existed. The end. Props to you for equating Joker and Thanos in cinema. I did the same thing in one of my Let's Talk videos. I'm gonna pause so you can get this whole link. But the problem I have with this sin is that you're suggesting that this film wasn't intended to be a Joker movie from the beginning, which is a lie purported by the mainstream media because of their unwarranted hate boner for this film. Here is Todd Phillips pitching his vision for Joker way back in 2016, where he was getting pushback from WB executives. Might want to stop attempting to play to the woke Twitter crowd, Jeremy, because they almost never know what the fuck they're talking about. Why do you want to kill me? <laughs> 
want to kill you? No. No, you. You complete me.